God, thank you that we get to hear a little bit of what heaven sounds like as we lift your name high. God, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege just to be able to worship you in this place. God, we thank you for who you are, and I just pray that um, as we learn tonight, you'll open up our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you for your love for us and your faithfulness in our lives. We ask these things, we pray these things all in your name. Amen. You guys can grab a seat. Hey, can we give it up for our worship team? Damien, Catalina, Graham, Brett, and Dan. Woo! Thanks, guys. So just before um, we dive in, I want to give credit to um, Fuller Youth Institute um, and their Sticky Faith series. And this is actually a series that we found on the internet and we looked through and we're actually taking a huge bunch of their points and um, ideas that, uh, that they helped put in their curriculum and it makes up this talk. So um, we're actually, as a youth group, senior high youth group, we're going through a series called Noticing God um, that comes from this Sticky Faith series as well. So thank you, Fuller Youth Institute. Okay, I'm going to make you guys stand up again. So stand up. And then turn to your neighbors and say, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh no, your shoes are tied. Turn to your neighbors and say, Matt, I'm glad you're here tonight. Both sides, both Matt, sides, left and right. Okay, once you're done, grab a seat again. All right. That was dangerous. You guys are so distracted now. You know, sometimes we don't notice things. Sometimes we don't notice things. Whether it's waking up in the morning and drinking that hot cup of coffee that you think is cold enough, but you happen to be drinking a mouthful of molten lava and it burns all the way down your throat. Or you're so sleepy that you wake up in the morning, you put your shirt on, and it takes three classes in the lunch hour and people laughing at you to finally realize that you put your shirt on inside out and nobody cared to tell you. It could be even if you've seen videos of people walking into walls or glass doors. I always find those videos really funny, but I'm sure you've seen those before. Sometimes we don't notice things. Sometimes we're too distracted or we're going too fast. Um, we don't pause enough, long enough to notice these things. And I suspect that in our lives we've become sometimes become so overwhelmed and bombarded with so much um, sensations that we just, like nothing seems to be special anymore because we just have so many things to notice. And on top of that, tonight we're talking about how we don't notice God. Surprise, right? Um, we don't notice God sometimes. Not that he's not at work. John 5, 17 says this, Jesus answered them, my father is working until now and I and working. So one thing to remember is that Jesus is always at work, and sometimes we just don't notice him. So what does God at work look like? It might not look like a pillar of fire or a pillar of smoke or a talking donkey in our lives. And for the most part, most of the time, actually almost all of the time, noticing God in our lives doesn't happen passively. We need to take an active step in noticing God. So you might be hearing this and you might ask the question of why do we need to notice God? Well, if Jesus and the Father and God are always at work, Holy Spirit's always at work, we are co-workers in God's kingdom. As Ephesians 2 puts it, God has prepared good works for us to walk in. In other words, God's at work and we can work alongside him as he brings redemption to the world. And so tonight, I want to talk about noticing God at work in our lives. And by the time we're done here, I want you to be able to understand this. God is at work in our lives. We need to choose. We need, we need to choose to notice it. God is at work in our lives. We need to choose to notice it. So what do I mean by this? If you have your Bibles or your phones, um, 
open them up to Exodus chapter 3. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 3, if you want to follow along. We're talking about Moses. Surprise, surprise. I get to talk about myself tonight, which is great. Um, we're going to be looking at the first four verses in Exodus chapter 3. And if you've been with us in the last couple weeks, you might have seen the story already. But I want to highlight a few important parts in this passage that will give us a process to help us notice God at work in our lives. And then we're going to finish off with a practical tool that you can put to use, practice noticing God in your own life tonight. So let me read Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over there and see the strange sight, why this bush doesn't burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called from him, called, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Here I am. So let's break down the story. The first thing I want you to notice here is that Moses chose to notice. Moses chose to notice. So if you're taking notes, I don't know if you guys have pens or whatnot or on your phones. The number one thing you can write down is choose to notice the extraordinary in the ordinary. Choose to notice the extraordinary in the ordinary. If you look at verse 2, it says that Moses saw. So as he's bringing his sheep out into the desert, just walking around looking for grass, Moses sees this bush burst into flame. And through my research, there's actually a plant that will spontaneously combust given enough heat because it excretes these oils that are flammable. And so in, in these wildernesses back in the Middle East, it's super hot there. And so it's very likely that these bushes like, were a common occurrence. And so we don't know what kind of plant this actually was in the Bible, but it was on fire and fire is cold. Um, scholars suspect that this plant may have actually been very common in this desert, and here's why. The Bible doesn't say Moses saw a bush on fire, period. If it was like a weird thing that the bush was on fire, it'd just leave it there. Um, but the Bible goes on to say Moses saw the bush was on fire and it did not burn up. It didn't burn up. That was what was peculiar about this bush. And so clearly something strange was happening here. Something strange about this bush not burning up. Something extraordinary was happening through something so ordinary. So can I ask you this? How often do you think we miss God in our everyday lives? How often do you think we miss God in our everyday lives? We need to choose to notice the extraordinary and the ordinary. Number two, choose to pay attention to the extraordinary in the ordinary. So number one was choose to notice. Number two is choose to pay attention to the extraordinary in the ordinary. If this bush was just an ordinary um, circumstance, Moses would have just walked on by. He could have just walked on by. If this bush was just another burning bush that he saw in the desert, and poof, it's just gone. He would have just walked by. But Moses didn't. If you read this, if we, as we read in the story, Moses stopped and he chose to pay attention to the extraordinary thing. It says that he looked and saw that the bush didn't burn up. He looked and saw that the bush didn't burn up. What's funny about this is that as I'm imagining him walking through the desert, leading his sheep, he sees this bush and it's like, oh, it's not burning up. But what am I supposed to do with these sheep? Like, he could have just walked on by because he had something else in mind. He had to guard these sheep. He had to lead these sheep to the next pasture. And so in our lives, we need to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. Because God is at, always at work, if we don't choose to pay attention, if we don't choose to notice, if we don't choose to pay attention, we can often miss these things. But Moses didn't. 
Moses chose to notice, and he chose to actually make space in his schedule to pay attention to this bush that didn't burn up. How often in our lives are we so caught up in our own scheduling and our own timing, everything so perfectly that we miss what God is saying to us or inviting us into? We will never get more time in our days to follow God. We we won't ever get more than 24 hours in a day to choose to spend time with God. It's up to us to decide what to do with that time. We need to choose to pay attention to the extraordinary and the ordinary. Number three, choose to respond, choose to listen and respond to the extraordinary and the ordinary. So from the top of the story, Moses notices, he chooses to pay attention. And lastly, Moses listens and responds. As he walks towards this burning bush, as he decides to investigate, to leave the sheep behind, to check out what God is saying or what's happening in this situation. Verse 4, God calls him, he's, God calls Moses. He says, Moses, Moses. And I wonder what it would have been like to be Moses standing in front of that bush. Like, all of a sudden you hear your name coming from that bush. It's like, man, I've been spending way too much time in the desert walking around. He's been in the desert for 40 years, okay? At this point, he's been in the desert for 40 years. So maybe that thought did cross his mind. Like, Am I just hallucinating? Moses didn't walk away because he thought he was crazy. He listened to the voice. And as God's voice called him, Moses, Moses, his response was, here I am. Here I am. And with this statement, and because of Moses' choice to notice, to pay attention, to listen and respond, Moses was able to experience the amazing plan that God had for his life. As you read on in Exodus, he does some pretty crazy things. So what does this story of a burning bush have to do with us today? As we look at this story, although Moses didn't intentionally stop because he knew God was at work, he really had no idea what was going on with this burning bush. He was like, that's weird, I'll go check it out. He walks on over, checks it out, and this story... Like I said earlier, it's just a guide to help us through understanding the process of what noticing God in our lives looks like. So here's a question for you. Are you are you going to choose to take time to notice, pay attention, listen, and respond to what God is doing and inviting you into? And you know, while God doesn't necessarily try to get our attention through burning bushes or talking donkeys, like I mentioned before. He is working in our everyday situations. He wants to speak with us and wants to invite us into his kingdom work, into his plans and purposes of redeeming the world. Sometimes God uses situations like an awesome conversation with a friend that you get to share Jesus with. Or maybe you're, you love science and you see God's handiwork in science and nature and You go, oh, thank you, God, for being so amazing. And you have this little moment with him. Or it's a refreshing walk outside as you're you're listening or thinking about God's word and what he's trying to say to you. And just a feeling of thankfulness and gratefulness wells up in you. But God just doesn't speak to us through ordinary things. You know, he continues to speak to you in life gets difficult and when life throws us curveballs. Maybe it's a broken heart because your girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with you. Maybe it's a death of a close friend or a loved one. The divorce of your parents, maybe. Maybe it's an injury that changes your whole identity because it's so wrapped up in sports. Maybe it's a friend who completely betrays you, betrays your trust, goes behind your back to hurt you. How is God speaking in those situations? You know, I don't have an answer to the terrible things that happen in our lives, but I want to be the first one to admit that I've had those moments in my life where um, I'm just like, God, why? What are you trying to say to me through these things? And I don't have time to unpack all that tonight. But the question remains, 
Are we choosing to notice God, to pay attention to God, to listen and respond to God in the ordinary circumstances and maybe the not so easy circumstances in our lives? Through everything, every circumstance in our life, God is working and always speaking. So as Moses was going about his day, leading the sheep to the next pasture, doing ordinary things, God shows up in, in no, God shows up in an ordinary scene with an extraordinary mission. And if Moses didn't choose to notice, if Moses didn't choose to pay attention and listen to what God had to say, he could have missed out on some amazing plan that God had for his life. Now let me bring, bring it back to us here today. How often do you think we are missing out on what God wants to invite us into? If you've chosen to follow Jesus, noticing God and paying attention to what he's saying and doing in your life is actually crucial to your life as a believer. It's the way that we deepen our relationship with him. And as we discover what God wants to do in and through us, we grow deeper in our relationship with him. And so um, I want to just touch on something real quickly before we, before we close. And I promised that I'd give you a practical tool to notice God more in your life. So here it is. The season we're entering into is Lent. Lent is a time that we get to um, learn how to listen to God, pay attention to God, to respond to what God is trying to say to us. And maybe you've heard this word before, or some of you may have even practiced it. Um, if, for, for those of you who don't know, just quickly here, Lent is a period of 40 days where believers are to commemorate Jesus' temptation in the wilderness and to prepare themselves for Easter Sunday. During Lent, many people's focus is many people focus on spiritual disciplines like prayer, fasting, studying of scriptures, and it's a season that's just meant to remind believers to create space in our lives so that we can notice God, so that we can pay attention to Him, so that we can listen and respond to what He's saying to us. Lent is also the time where we reflect and examine our hearts, spend intentional time with Jesus, remembering what he did for us through the cross. It's a huge lead up to Good Friday, but even a bigger lead up to Easter Sunday when Jesus rises from the dead. Through Lent, we are met with our sin and the gravity of how we've rebelled against God, the creator of the universe, and it all leads up to Jesus' victory on the cross and how he dealt with with our sin. One of the spiritual practices that many people engage in is fasting during Lent. It's a taking out of something in our lives, not just to look holy or like special or better than everybody else, or we don't do that because everybody else is doing it. The heart behind Lent and even fasting is this, to subtract something from our lives in order to make room for something else heart behind Lent is to subtract something from our lives in order to add something else. Subtracting something means to make space, to carve out time, and to add something means to add a time where you get to choose to intentionally dive in to what God is trying to say to you. As we enter into this season where we, where we reflect on Jesus' sacrifice for us, you don't need to necessarily fast from food. You don't even need to participate in Lent. But, but, if you want to have a healthy spiritual life, if you want to have a vibrant relationship with God, you need to learn how to notice Him, how to pay attention to Him, how to listen and respond to what He's saying to you. Because God is always at work in your life. And like Moses, we can choose to, like, could, do you want to either walk away from what God has for you or choose as Moses did to say, here I am, God. Speak to me. What do you want me to do? If you want to have a healthy spiritual life, you need to learn how to notice God at work in your life. 
So you might be asking this now, okay, now that I've chosen to pause and pay attention, I'm going to try to make space, um, how do I do that? How do I do that? How do I practice making space or um, choosing to notice or choosing to pay attention and listen to God? What does that mean? What does that look like? I don't actually have the time to dive into that tonight, but we'll cover it in our community groups, so you guys should all come back to your community groups in the following weeks. And my challenge for you, small challenge for you this week, a little takeaway. This week, take some time in your days to pause and ask God, what are you doing in this situation that I'm facing? God, what are you trying to tell me through these things? Is there anything that you want me to do about it? And at the end of the day, maybe if you're a writer, journal about it, or journal something that you're thankful for even. It's just a little small step that everybody, all of us can take. How can we notice God more in our lives? Something that we're thankful for, prayer request that we might have. And if you're not a writer, you don't like to journal, just tell a friend, tell your parents about it or something like that. Talk about how you've seen God moving in your life and what he's been saying to you. And if you're so inclined to participate in Let's, ask God to show you something, if there's anything that he wants you to, to take out of your life for a season in order to add more intentional time to your schedules of meeting with him. Because the fact is God does want to speak to you. God does want to speak to you. And right now, I just want to switch gears a little bit and chat with those. There might be some of us in this room who are just aren't so sure about this Jesus guy. And I just want to take this moment to be real with you, if that's okay. You know, as I've come to know God more and more, as I've asked him for his heart for people, I've come to know that God never gives up anyone. As far as you can run from God, he doesn't give up on you. If you've never heard of this Jesus guy and you want to begin an amazing journey with him, that'll change your entire life. Come talk to me after and I'd love to help you through that. You know, following Jesus isn't easy. The Bible actually promises us that we'll have troubles and our lives with Jesus is never easy or glamorous. But if you do choose to follow Jesus, you can rest in the fact that the God of the universe has your life planned out, it has a plan for you, and he also has you in his hands. And if you've grown up in the church and you've decided that this is kind of all a joke or you just don't want to take this seriously at all, I'm praying that you come to know, to feel, and to understand how crazy God is for you. And how much he wants you to come home. How much he wants to work in your life. Because he created you for a purpose. He created you for a purpose. And for you to see that purpose just brings the most joy to his heart. I also pray that you begin to notice the ways that he's been reaching out to you through the situations or the circumstances in your life. The question is, again, what are you going to do about it? See, I can't change your mind for you. you. Only you can do that. God is always at work. We need to choose to notice it. So in your lives, this coming week, let me ask you this, all of us in this room, how are you going to choose to notice the extraordinary? How are you going to choose to pay attention to the extraordinary? How are you going to listen and respond to the extraordinary? Just think about these things for about two minutes and we'll end the evening uh, we'll send you into community groups for some discussion, but we'll sing a song first. So these next two minutes, just take by yourself. Just thinking about what God is saying to you tonight. 